Welcome to CETA Labs. First let's find out the answers to the questions asked in the last module. Our first question was what the basic components of a module are and which components are mandatory? Keyword module, end module, module name, port list, port declarations, variable declaration, data flow and behavioral statements, lower level module instantiations, and task and functions are the basic components of a module, from which keyword module, end module and module name are mandatory components. Second question right module definition for 4 is to 1 multiplexer which is 4 inputs, 2 select lines and 1 output, as we have not studied module internals yet, we don't need to mention them. So, we start with module, module name, as 4 underscore 1 underscore mux followed by port list, which is Y, S, I. Y is declared as output and, I, is declared as input in vector form, 3 is to 0 as it has four inputs. There are two select lines, so, S, is declared as input in vector form 1 is to 0. And finally, we terminate the module definition with the keyword end module. Another question was to declare a top level module, stimulus, for the last defined module definition, that is 4 is to 1 multiplexer. And we have to connect the ports by ordered list. Output is declared as wire and inputs as register. And we instantiate lower level module as 4 is to 1 mux, followed by instance name, with enclosed brackets which contain the port list in the same order as the module definition. As we know, top level module or test bench internals are written within initial and begin block, so initial followed by begin and end block. Finally, module is terminated with the keyword end module. Next question is to connect the ports by name for the same module. So, here's how we instantiate module by name. This tutorial is in continuation with module 2 that is Verilog HDL. In the last tutorial, we laid foundation of Verilog design by discussing design methodologies, basic conventions and constructs, modules and port interfaces. Now, in continuation with last module we will move further with the abstraction levels in Verilog. In this module, we will study the gate level abstraction in detail and learn how to write module internals. And also, we will learn how to use model sim simulator tool. Internals of each module can be defined at four levels of abstraction, depending on the needs of the design. These are, behavioral or algorithmic level. This is the highest level of abstraction provided by Verilog HDL. A module can be implemented, in terms of the desired design algorithm, without concerning for the hardware implementation details. Designing at this level is very similar to C programming. Data flow level. At this level, the module is designed by specifying the data flow. The designer is aware of how data flows between hardware registers, and how the data is processed in the design. Gate level. The module is implemented in terms of logic gates and interconnections between these gates. Design at this level is similar to describing a design in terms of a gate level logic diagram. Switch level. This is the lowest level of abstraction provided by Verilog. A module can be implemented in terms of switches storage nodes, and the interconnections between them. Design at this level requires knowledge of switch level implementation details. In the digital design community, the term register transfer level, RTL, is frequently used for a Verilog description that uses a combination of behavioral and data flow constructs and is acceptable to logic synthesis tools. In this tutorial, we will discuss a design at a low level of abstraction that is, gate level. Most digital design is now done at gate level or higher levels of abstraction. At gate level, the circuit is described in terms of gates, for example, AND, NAND, etc. Hardware design at this level is intuitive for a user with a basic knowledge of digital logic design, because it is possible to see one-to-one -one correspondence between the logic circuit diagram and the Verilog description. Hence, we chose to start with gate level modeling and move top higher levels of abstraction in the succeeding tutorials. A logic circuit can be designed by use of logic gates. 
Verilog supports basic logic gates as predefined primitives. These primitives are instantiated like modules, except that they are predefined in Verilog and do not need a module definition. All logic circuits can be designed by using basic gates. There are two classes of basic gates, multiple input single output gates, single input multiple output gates. Multiple input single output gates have one scalar output and multiple scalar inputs. The first terminal in the list of gate terminals is an output and the other terminals are inputs. The output of a gate is evaluated as soon as one of the inputs changes. The gates available in Verilog are AND, NAND, OR, NOR, XOR, XNOR. The corresponding logic symbols and input-output relationship for these gates are shown here. We consider gates with two inputs. Here, the output terminal is denoted by OUT. Input terminals are denoted by single quote I1 and I2 single quote. These gates are instantiated to build logic circuits in Verilog. Here, it shows the syntax for instantiating a gate. First is the gate type or gate name which you want to instantiate, followed by instance name with enclosed brackets containing port list. These are the examples of gate instantiations. More than two inputs can be specified in a gate instantiation. Gates with more than two inputs are instantiated by simply adding more input ports in the gate instantiation. Verilog automatically instantiates the appropriate gate. Note that the instance name does not need to be specified for primitives. This lets the designer instantiate hundreds of gates without giving them a name. But, it is good practice to use instance name. The truth tables for these gates define how outputs for the gates are computed from the inputs. Truth tables are defined assuming two inputs. Outputs of gates with more than two inputs are computed by applying the truth table iteratively. Single input multiple output gates have one scalar input and one or more scalar outputs. The last terminal in the port list is connected to the input. Other terminals are connected to the outputs. Two basic single input multiple output gates primitives are provided in Verilog, buff, and not. The symbols for these logic gates are shown. Notice that these gates can have multiple outputs but exactly one input, which is the last terminal in the port list. These are the examples showing gate instantiation. The truth tables for these gates are very simple. These are the truth tables for gates with one input and one output. Gates with an additional control signal on buff and not gates are also available. These are also known as dry state gates. These are buff if 1, buff if 0, not if 1 and not if 0. Its syntax is a little bit different. Gate type followed by instance name with enclosed brackets containing port list and ports are output, input and control. These gates propagate only if their control signal is asserted. They propagate, Z, if their control signal is deasserted. These are the symbols for buff if and not if. These gates are used when a signal is to be driven only when the control signal is asserted. Such a situation is applicable when multiple drivers drive the signal. These drivers are designed to drive the signal on mutually exclusive control signals. These are the truth tables for these gates. The L and H symbols have a special meaning. The L symbol means that the output has zero or Z value. The H symbol means that the output has one or Z value. Any transition to H or L is treated as a transition to X. These examples show instantiation of buff if one, buff if zero, not if one and not if zero gates. A simple example of end gate. Simply, we started with module, module name and port list, point to be noted, here, if we write module name, and, in small letters, it will understand it as, and, gate, so while naming any module, take care, so that you may not use any predefined primitive name as module name. Y is declared as output and, A, and, B, are declared as input. And gate is instantiated as we are designing and gate. Finally module is terminated via keyword and module. Here is the test bench for and gate module defined in previous slide. 
Again we will define a module and module name. Here we don't need to define the port list as we are instantiating design buck and stimulus block. Output is defined as wire and input is defined as register. Then design block is instantiated. And within initial and begin block we will mention all the possible input condition to test the design. And lastly, terminating begin block with an end keyword and module with end module keyword. Model Sim is a verification and simulation tool for VHDL, Verilog, System Verilog, and mixed language designs. There is a free, student version of Model Sim that can be downloaded from the following location www.model.com slash resources slash student underscore edition slash download dot asp follow the instructions on the page to install the program and obtain a student license which they will send to you via email once you have received the license and everything has been properly installed model sim should execute without issue navigate to the help pdf documentation pull down menu and select tutorial from the list. Thankfully, Model Sim has provided a simple explanation on the basic use of the application. Read through and follow along sections 1, 4 and 6 using Verilog. Note that Model Sim tutorial will not instruct you on the syntax or use of Verilog. Here we are presenting a small introductory tutorial on Model Sim which will instruct you on the syntax and use of Verilog. Launch Model Sim and start by clicking on file new and then project create project window will pop up type the project name and you can also browse for new location if you want to change and then click ok as you will click ok another window will pop up asking in case you want to add items to this project if you want to create a new file select create new file in case you want to add existing file, select add existing file. Select create simulation, in case you want to create simulation file. To create a new folder, select create new folder. Another window will pop up asking for the file's name and file type. After giving file name and file type, click on OK. Then close the window add items to the project as we are not adding any other file. If we need to add an existing file then we click on add existing file and browse its path. Alternatively, we can add file in the project via File, New, Source, Verilog. Now, right click on and dot v file in the workspace tab and select edit to write the code. Write the code for the same and save the file. Now, right click on the and dot v file again in the workspace tab and select compile compile selected alternatively you can undock your file and then compile your code by selecting compile from the options in transcript tab successful compilation will be displayed with green color also in workspace green tick against our file name will represent successful compilation now we will add another file to the project for writing test bench, following the same instruction discussed before. Then, compile the test bench with the same procedure. Now, we will simulate our code to test its functionality. And, how we will do it? Click on Simulate, Start Simulation. After clicking on Simulation, a window will pop up asking which file to simulate. Click on Work and select the test bench file. Then, click OK. This window will appear as we select the test bench file. In the Workspace tab, right click on the instance, move your cursor to Add, then, to Wave, then select all items in region. Then, the Wave window will appear. Click to undock the Wave window. Click this icon to run the simulation. As visibility is very low click this icon to zoom full this is clearer waveform after zooming to terminate simulation go back to the simulate option and click on end simulation another window will pop up to assure that you want to end the simulation click yes if you are sure 
Here is an example of half adder written in gate level modeling with both design and stimulus block. And here is its simulation result. Having understood the various types of gates available in Verilog, we will discuss a real example that illustrates design of gate level digital circuits and implement the design in the model sim. We will design a 4 is to 1 multiplexer with two select lines. We will assume for this example that signals S1 and S0 do not get the value X or Z. The input output diagram and logic diagram for the multiplexer using basic logic gates is shown here. The logic diagram has a one-to-one -one correspondence with the Verilog description. The Verilog description for the multiplexer is shown here. Two intermediate nets, A and B, are created. They are complements of input signals S1 and so. Internal nets Y0, Y1, Y2, and Y3 are also required. Note that instance names are optional for Verilog primitives but are mandatory for instances of user-defined modules. This multiplexer can be tested with the stimulus shown here. The stimulus checks that each combination of select signals connects the appropriate input to the output. This is the simulation output of this multiplexer. Until now, we described circuits without any delays, that is, zero delay. In real circuits, logic gates have delays associated with them. Gate delays allow the Verilog user to specify delays through the logic circuits. The gate delay can be specified in the gate instantiation itself. Here is the syntax of a gate instantiation with a delay specification. A gate delay can be comprised of up to three values, rise, fall and turn off delays. Rise delay. The rise delay is associated with a gate output transition to a one from another value. Fall delay. The fall delay is associated with a gate output transition to a zero from another value. Turn off delay. The turn off delay is associated with a gate output transition to the high impedance value, Z, from another value. If the value changes to X, the minimum of the three delays is considered. Three types of delay specifications are allowed. If only one delay is specified, this value is used for all transitions. If two delays are specified, they refer to the rise and fall delay values. The turn off delay is the minimum of the two delays. If all three delays are specified, they refer to rise, fall, and turn off delay values. If no delays are specified, the default value is zero. Here are some examples showing delay specifications. Verilog provides an additional level of control for each type of delay mentioned above. For each type of delay rise, fall, and turn off three values, min, type and max, can be specified. Any one value can be chosen at the start of the simulation. Min, type, Max values are used to model devices, whose delays vary within a minimum and maximum range because of the IC fabrication process variations. Min value, the min value is the minimum delay value that the designer expects the gate to have. Type value, the type value is the typical delay value that the designer expects the gate to have. Max value, the max value is the maximum delay value that the designer expects the gate to have. These values can be chosen at Verilog runtime. The method of choosing a min, type, max value may vary for different simulators or operating systems. Examples of min, type, and max value specification are shown here. If no option is specified, the typical delay value is the default. Let us consider a simple example to illustrate the use of gate delays to model timing in the logic circuits. A simple module called gate implements the following logic equation, out equals AE dot B plus C. The gate level implementation is shown in the figure. The module contains two gates with delays of 5 and 4 time units. The module gate is defined in Verilog as shown here. Module keyword followed by module name, gate which is followed by port list. Then, we declared ports, out, as output port, and, A, B, C, as input ports. 
e is internal connection, which is why it is neither mentioned in port list nor is it declared. Internal connections are simply mentioned as wire after port declarations. Coming towards module internal and gate is instantiated and delay of five time unit is followed by port list as according to the syntax. Similarly, or gate is instantiated. And module is terminated with keyword and module. This module is tested by the stimulus file as shown here. Module keyword followed by module name, stimulus. Output port, out, declared as wire, and input ports, A, B, C, declared as reg. Then, module, gate, is instantiated. And, within initial begin block, all the possible input conditions are mentioned, to test the design. And finally, begin is terminated by keyword, end, and module is terminated by keyword, end module. The waveforms from the simulation are shown here, to illustrate the effect of specifying delays and gates. The waveforms are not drawn to scale. However, simulation time at each transition is specified below the transition. The outputs E and out are initially unknown. At time 10, after, A, B, and, C, all transition to 1, at 10, out transitions to 1, after a delay of 4 time units and, E, changes value to 1 after 5 time units. At time 20, B and C transition to 0, E changes value to 0 after 5 time units, and out transitions to 0, 4 time unit after E changes. Now, let's go back into the flashback in order to recall what we have learned so far in this module. We learned about level of abstractions in Verilog. What is gate level modeling? Then we studied about basic type of gates. We studied each gate's logic symbol, truth table, and corresponding Verilog primitive. These primitives can be instantiated like modules, so we studied primitive instantiation. We learned how to use model sim. We learned three types of gate delays. And also, some examples of gate level modeling. Now, can you answer these questions?